Hey guys, it's about seven o'clock, Friday, March 27th. I'm already here at the boat ramp. I'm gonna be fishing my local lake today, pulling some planer boards. I've had a lot of requests to do a video on planer boards. It's not something I do a lot, but I do have a little bit of experience doing it. I'll show you guys what I've learned along the way. Water temperature has been coming up pretty fast. The bite should be on. Quill back sucker. All right, now we found us some bait. Hopefully those are shad and not white bass or something like that. But 15 foot of water, that's about, that's about the depth I like when I'm throwing my net. You get in much shallower than that, they spook easy. You get close to them on the boat, you get much deeper, it's hard to get them in the net. I'm gonna throw on these, see what they are. Yeah. Hey guys, so it's time to get set up. We're setting up in about 15 foot of water. Uh, I'm gonna drag a few baits and suspend a few baits. We're starting out in 15 and we're gonna end up in about eight foot of water. Uh, not real sure what the weather's gonna do. We're supposed to get some storms today, so I'm kind of fishing close to the truck right now, but I have caught good fish here in the past, so we're just gonna see what happens. Not much wind, everything's good. Got fresh bait along with some uh, skipjack that I brought with me. Cut these shad into some smaller chunks just because I'm running floats on my dragon setups. And I want to be able to, I want the float to be able to suspend. That'd be a good live bait for River Certified to throw out. I've seen him do it, catch some nice fish. My dragon rigs, I got a little float above the hook. I got about four foot of 60 pound Andy Monster leader line and I just got a sinker slide on there. You can use a sinker slide or a three way. They'll both work for dragging. And then my dragon sinker, I've got a couple different kinds. I've got some that I made and I've got some that was given to me, but I really like these. Uh, a guy gave them to me at the catfish conference and I wish I could remember his name right off, but if you're watching this, I appreciate it, buddy. The first thing you wanna do, guys, is go ahead and get your boat headed in the direction you wanna go and get it, get it going about the speed that you wanna be drifting at. There's a good fish on the screen right now. Maybe we'll catch it. I'm just gonna toss this out. I'm gonna let it go to the bottom. And then we're ready to put our planer board on and I'll show you what's going on with that. This is our right side planer board. So we're actually putting it off the left side of the boat if you were facing the back of the boat. So all these boards work kind of the same way. There's gonna be some kind of swivel or something that'll free slide up and down the line. And then there's gonna be a, cl a clip that releases under tension. So when a fish hits it, it'll pop loose and slide all the way down to the hook or down to the leader. So we're gonna be dragging on these boards or on this one anyway. So I threw my bait out. I let it go to the bottom. I let out some line and then we're gonna clip it on the clip towards the end of the rod. That's how I remembered when I was first starting. Put it in the rod holder and let it free spool until you get it out to the, however far you want it. And then you lock the reel down and it'll do the rest for you. When a fish comes up and hits it real hard, the clip will release, it'll slide down the line. Circle hooks are, in my opinion, the best thing to use on planer boards just because you're not gonna get a good hook set by jerking. 
just because you got the you know you got the planer your line going to the planer board and then down so if you jerk you're just going to pop the planer board off you're not going to make it all the way down to the fish's mouth and i'm going to be throwing a couple more out that are going to be dragging without planer boards i'll throw two out without planer boards and i'll throw two out with planer boards and i need a sinker on there it won't work the only reason I use the planer boards, guys, is just to keep stuff from tangling and get things out of the way from the boat a little bit more. If you keep everything right behind the boat, you don't cover as much water. You normally don't catch as many fish. And here's a little weight that I made. It's just some egg sinkers with some beads in between them to give it a little more length. And they work just fine. I rarely lose one. And we're gonna put this one out like I said. Oh, we need to lock that reel down. That planer board's out about where I want it to be. I don't know if you can see it or not. There it is. I'm gonna lock the reel down and you'll see what it does. It'll start it'll start slowly going out to the side. The faster you go, the farther you put it out, and the faster you go, the more of a spread you're gonna get. But uh, most of the fish I catch when I'm dragging baits or suspending are on planer boards. And I think it's just because normally in a lake I'm fishing shallower water. And I think the boat spooks the fish in the shallow water, especially when you got your trolling motor running. Spilt my coffee as usual. All right, guys, the hard part's over. Now it's time to catch some fish. Hopefully we catch some fish. There's people all around me, so I'm sure I look like I'm talking to myself, but that's part of the videos, I guess. No, he didn't either. What in the world have I got here? He nailed it and got all wrapped up. Yeah. I've seen him fish on the side stand when I come over and there's a couple. We might catch another one out here. But boy, he's hooked good. He ran at me so fast I couldn't keep up with him. I thought he'd come off. He he nailed it and then busted the water out there. Come up on top of the water. I thought he'd get off. Of course my net is from the boat. That's a pretty good fish right there. Probably a 20 pounder anyway. I drug from 15 foot, now I'm in six foot of water. I never had a bite in the 15 foot. As soon as I got up here into this shallow water, I caught a fish, so. That's a nice fish right there, guys. Boy, they can pull hard in that shallow water. I like weighing them in the net. But I don't think he's big enough to where it'll hurt him, weighing him with the fish grips. If he was any bigger than that, I'd never do it. Fish this size, I don't think it'll hurt him a bit. Twenty-two ten. Nice fish, guys. I'm gonna get him back in the water. Like I said, I'm looking for a couple to eat, but I'd never even think about taking one this size. I'm looking for a five pound and under. I won't keep one. Even ten pounds to me is too big. 
I love to eat them, but I'm not gonna kill a fish like this. Let's get him back in the water, guys. Well, guys, I headed home a little bit early today. Between the wind and the boat traffic, it was impossible to control the speed of the boat. And when you're drift fishing, boat control is about 90% of the battle. Hopefully I made some sense of what I was trying to explain today about drift fishing and planer boards and everything. I want to do a, a more in-depth video of it on down the road. I've had a lot of questions about the planer boards, but I don't know exactly what people are wanting to know about them. So be sure to leave a comment if you have a question. And I'll be sure to cover it in the next video. That's one thing I plan on doing a little bit more this year is fishing lakes. And when I'm on a lake, I really never want to anchor up on a lake. I prefer to drag or suspend baits using planer boards. Uh, it's something I enjoy, something I want to get better at. But stay tuned, guys. Thank you all for watching. Y'all be safe out there. God bless you guys, and we'll see you next Tuesday.